I think this is super important, and I think it can really affect everybody's life. If people understood that 99% of the things that you want, you have been lied to about. So you have been told and you have given value to things that do not even matter because the world wants you to chase useless things. So I try and explain this and it's gonna be a very weird explanation. I learned this when I was a kid because my dad used to work as a photographer for uh, travel magazines back before the internet was a thing. So he would travel, I think the company was called Cosma or something like that. <clears throat> and he would travel all over the world. Let's say he went to India and he would take pictures of the Taj Mahal. And he would come back home and he would show me the pictures of the Taj Mahal and they would look insane, like amazing. And I would always say to him, oh, how was it? How was the Taj Mahal? I bet it was cool. How was it? And he was like, eh, looks good in the picture. And I was like, what do you mean? Like everyone wants to go visit this thing and you are taking pictures of it and putting it in a magazine to make people go visit this thing. And you're telling me it's not even that impressive. And he was like, well, that's life and that's everything to do with the world. People need to spend their money on something. So we try and tr we tr get tricked into believing that these things are important when really it's just a building. You know, obviously it has history and you could go into loads of different parts of it. And I'm not using the, the Taj Mahal as just an example. You could use the pyramids, you could use whatever you want, the White House, anything. Eiffel Tower is probably the best one. It's just a I mean, metal triangle or whatever it is. Who cares? But people care because of they attach value to it. So when you get a magazine and you have to look at the places you're going to go on holiday, you need a reason to go. You need a reason to, to part with your money. It's all marketing. It's all lies. It's all bullshit. It's just, look at the Taj Mahal, blah, blah, blah. I'll give you some facts about it. And people will be like, oh, I want to go. And then what happens is you get confirmation bias because people spend their money and spend their time, their, their precious holiday time, go into India and go into the Taj Mahal. And they come back and you go, oh, how was it? Oh, it was amazing. It was the best thing I've ever done. You really need to do it. Trying to like flex and show off to people that they went to the Taj Mahal. But in reality, it's not that impressive. And I was a kid and my dad kind of explained this to me and I didn't believe him. I was like, yeah, 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 whatever. My dad traveled the world. I used to play a game where you spin the globe and you used to stop it and ask him, oh, have you been here? And he would say, yeah, I was there, like whatever. He's, he's a well-traveled guy. So... I now have grown up and I've become a pretty well-traveled guy. I've been to, I don't know, 60 countries or something. And I now tell the same thing to other people. I'm like, oh, so I, went, I just went to Ibiza and I went to Leo, some restaurant. To be fair, it was pretty good. But the way it's marketed to you, it's like the best experience of your life. Like you've got to go, it's amazing. And the, the pressure to market these products and these experiences in these parts of life, they all get filtered down to you. So when you're like a young kid, you look at life and you're putting value into things and importance into, uh, onto things and putting things on a pedestal that really don't matter. And they, they mean nothing. And they're just sold to you by society and by marketing and by the and the best example of this the best example is bottles in a club it's the best example you'll see online you'll see on movies you'll see pictures of people going to the club and spending thousands and tens of thousands of bottles uh, dollars on bowls and you'll think i want to do that trust me when you do it it sucks it's not worth it First time, maybe it's cool. But once you've done it over and over again, it is the biggest waste of money in the world. But you'll take a picture of it. You'll say to your mate, oh, look at me. I was at this club and I got bottle service. And the, the, the problem is, the trap is that you do it once and then it just becomes like normal. And then you start doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it. So if your goal in life is to make enough money to be able to go to the club and spend money on bottles, it... The, the importance and what you're like focusing on in that endeavor is it, just retarded because you can get the same bottle in a supermarket for a hundred bucks or 80 bucks, whatever it is. It's like, but the value has been put so deeply on that thing and society has made it so important and have so much importance that you think our oh, people that go to the club and get bottles, they get girls, they get attention, they get all these things because that's how it's marketed to you. But in real life, the people that get attention, the people that get girls are 
the cool guys, the guys that have personality, the guys that can communicate, the guys that can talk, the guys that can approach girls, the guys that are, you know, are interesting. It's got nothing to do with bottles. It's got nothing to do with the location. It's got nothing to do with the club they're in. It's got everything to do with the people that they are. But you get sold if you go to the club and you buy bottles, you'll get girls. Not true. Absolute lie. Like everything. If you go to the Taj Mahal, it'll be amazing. Lie. Like, for example. So once I understood this concept, and, uh, and, and it's almost like peeking behind the cur curtain and realizing we're, we're putting value on the wrong things in life, it makes you kind of see what is valuable and what does have value and what, what you should be spending your time doing. And I think the whole of society now, everything's been turned upside down and everyone's putting value on, uh, I mean, I'm going to talk about women a little bit, but everyone's putting value on, on the wrong things. So as a woman, I was talking to my wife about this, you, your value is perceived by your beauty at a young age. So between the ages of 18 and let's say 25, beauty is your value. And women put their whole value because of Instagram and all this crap on how good they look. And that's fine because why do you want to look good? Because you want to attract a mate, because you want to get married, whatever the reason is. So once you put your value into how good you look and then you attract the mate or you attract the boyfriend or you attract the husband or whatever it's going to be, your value still can't stay on that thing. Because society has told you that that's the most important thing. And women that put value on the way that they look, when they get to 50, when they get to 60, they are miserable. Because it's, you know, it runs out. It's a finite thing. Obviously, I'm not saying that women shouldn't care about the way they look, because obviously they should. It's, it's the way society works. Anyone that tells you differently is lying to you. But I think the problem is that women are getting told that that's the only value they can bring to the world. And then when they get past the stage where they can be viable for that beauty of, like I said, 25, maybe 30, they start getting plastic surgery or focusing so much on trying to stay young and they miss out on all the other things that they can bring to the, to the table and all the other, the value that they can bring to the world and that they can bring to society and they become unhappy. And I believe that's societal pressure pushing women into believing that the only thing that matters is how they look not about the household that they can build or you know the experiences that they can bring for the family. I always say like my auntie and my mum were fantastic hosts. Look, we had amazing Christmases where we would go around my auntie's house and huge, you know, experiences where all the family would get together and and that is that's huge value, you know, for 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 a woman to be able to host and provide such ex experiences for their family. I mean, I think that get the society doesn't put any value on that now. You know, whereas as I see my generation like starting to have kids and have Christmases, there's not many women out there that want to host a big Christmas and bring the family together and have their cousins and have, you know, everyone together in the household. They're more interested in looking good on Instagram or going to the right restaurant or wearing the right clothes or all these, these, these messed up ideals because society has told them that's what's important. And I think... Women need to be able to transcend that thought process and need to understand that, yes, it's incredibly, impeccably important at how good you look, but then once you get to a certain age, you need to think about the next stage of life and you need to transcend past just being pretty because being pretty doesn't matter, you know, especially once you have a partner and you're building a life together and building a family and all these things. And I think the game is much harder for women than it is for men because, Men have to find their mission. Men have to find the reason they're on the planet. Men have to find the thing that's going to push them forward and they have to find, you know, motivation to get up and to push and to become the best that they can be. But from a young age, obviously maybe the, the, the woman phase between the age of 18 and maybe 25 or maybe 30 or maybe even 35 now because it's getting pushed back and back and back. But once you're, you're in a relationship and you're, you're, you're thinking bigger and you transcend the ideology of I need to find a mate or I need to go out the weekend and party or I need to get bottles like I was talking about earlier, once you transcend that and you start thinking about lineage and you start thinking about family and you start thinking about your sons and making an impact on the universe and, and doing these things and you create a company, you know, a lot of people that have big companies or they, that lasts forever. 
because they start that it doesn't change for them their life doesn't really change as a man between you know obviously you hit 30 or 40 maybe now like 40 50 60 70 it's always the same miss metal always the same mission your mission is always remains the same to provide for your family to provide for your future family to you know look after your your name you know and, you, and your clan that you're building or building your own reality that's like never changes whereas for a woman she has to evolve many times because she needs to once she becomes a mother she needs to then prioritize her family then her family are going to leave her once the kids get to 20 18 22 whatever that age is going to be and once they leave them then then she needs to transcend into another importance another reason another mission you know she needs to understand that if you're a 50, 60, 70 year old woman and all you care about is the way you look, I mean, you're not going to be very happy. It's just not possible. You, can, you can't go back in time. But I think women, again, with plastic surgery, with all these things that, that are being sold to them and they're being told, you can look beautiful forever. It doesn't matter if you're fat, if you're whatever. It doesn't matter. You're beautiful forever. It's a lie. And people need to start, women need to start understanding that the way they add value to society is not just how beautiful they are. And I think that's something as men that we are responsible for because women think, oh, if, I get, if I'm more attractive, I'll, I'll attract a better, a better man. And it's wrong because men want more than just beauty. Obviously, it's a part of it. But I think that's, uh, you know, it comes down to this ethos that I learned years and years ago with my dad talking to me about the Taj Mahal, that everything in, in life and everything in the world comes down to marketing. And everything you get sold is a lie. Everything that you think you want, you need to really think about why do I want this thing and who has sold it to me? What is the reason that I want to have this future? Like what am I actually living for? And these questions are obviously very deep and very long, but a lot of people, they want to get a Rolex or they want to get a supercar or they want to get a mansion, but for what reason, you know, apart from to project value? I think that that's the society that we're living in now is is selling us this dream of having to be this guy and again like i said for women it comes down to the beauty aspect all that sort of stuff i think once we understand that the world is not on our side and they are not they're not pushing us in the right direction and their va the values of society don't help us indiv as individuals anymore in the 50s 40s maybe they did because they were, they wanted us to build family units but now it's become individualism and people are creating their own individual worlds and being pushed in certain directions. So it's not about unity anymore, which used to, used to be an overarching feeling of unity and belonging to a community. And you know, maybe, maybe it's your country, maybe it's your town, maybe it's your church. That's all gone. Now it just matters who you are. So because it's become down to an individualism, people are they're forgetting these, these things that, that give your life meaning. And they're searching for these accolades or these things, and they're big because they are being sold them by a society that's telling them you are only important if you have this. You're only going to get a girlfriend if you can buy bottles at a club. It's bullshit. It's absolute bullshit. But people believe it because the sales tactics are so strong, and the influence from the outside is so strong, and your peer pressure is so strong. There's two types of peer pressure. There's negative peer pressure and there's positive peer pressure. Peer pressure is a fantastic thing. You know, if you have the right peers, if you have the right people sending you the right message. If your peers are telling you to go out every weekend and get drunk and buy bottles, they're not the right peers. Maybe when you're 18, 19, 20, have a good time, but you need to transition and, and, and transcend those stages of life. And I think that message is missing where you need to go through, like every, every life has stages through time. And don't let the stage of your life be led by someone else's influence who's selling you a product. Don't let someone sell you the ideology of how your life should be. You should decide what your life should be and what you value. And I think society now, the values are completely wrong, completely wrong. So if you're not sure what to do, it sounds crazy, but I honestly believe the best thing to do is the opposite of what you're being told. So the opposite of what your parents tell you, the opposite of what your peer group tell you, the opposite of what like the, these institutions are telling you, start there and just see what, where, where you go with it and try and 
internalize and think about yourself and what you want, not what you have been told that you want, but what you actually want and what you think is going to make you happy. And I think that's a, you know, a great lesson. And I think I learned that I was super fortunate with to have my, my dad and him just like I said, allow me to peek behind the curtain with that message about the Taj Mahal. Like I have to sell this son. So it looks amazing because I made it look amazing because they want people to buy it. And I'm talking about a vacation or a holiday, but if you broaden that out across the world and across what people are telling you and the message that are being sent today, I think it applies to everything. Everything is marketing, everything is sales, and everything is a lie. You have to seek out the truth. And once you understand the truth, you need to go down that path. And that path will normally be your own path. Uh, and you know, I hope you can find it. I think finding your own clarity of purpose is an extremely difficult challenge. And I think the best way to do it is to go through hardship and to really test yourself and to try to become a better man. And I mean, it's a whole different subject, a whole another video on that. But I think that's the, the super important to understand that you are being lied to and you need to seek out the truth. I hope this helps. I hope you enjoyed it.